Now it's time to create our first method in C Sharp. At the moment, based on the user input, we are branching our code and telling the program to print different messages. But since our game will be fairly complex, we need to create methods. In C Sharp, every execute instruction is performed in the context of a method. And right now, we are working inside the main method. We can't see that in the program.cs since in .NET 6 you have the option to keep the main method behind the scenes. Up to .NET 5 an explicit main method was mandatory but we are still working inside this main method even if we can't see it. And the best criteria to create a new method is a principle called separation of concerns. You want each method to do one specific thing which makes the code more organized, easy to read, and easy to maintain. At the moment, the main method has many tasks. We are printing the menu, collecting the user input, and printing a message based on it, all in one method. So our first method will be the addition game. When we create a method, we have to define its signature, which is the first line that you see here, void addition game in the parentheses. Void means that this method doesn't return anything. It will execute an action, but won't return any data. Then in yellow, we have the name of the method, and the parentheses is where the arguments for the methods go. Inside the parentheses, you're going to define what this method expects to receive, and to define that, you have to specify the type and the name of the argument. You're going to see that soon with an example in our game. So these are the three components that are mandatory for methods. The return type, the name, and the space for the arguments. And of course, we don't need to define any arguments if we don't need any. That space can be empty. But the return type, the name, and the parentheses always need to be there. The method signature can have more keywords. And a very common one is the access modifier, which we're going to be using later. And there are also optional keywords such as abstract, static, which are out of the scope of this course because they are for more advanced cases. We're going to code our game inside these methods, but for now, let's just print a message like we were doing before so you can see how the methods work. So let's copy and paste the console.write line for the addition game. And then inside the code block, we're going to call the method. And for that, all we need is the method's name and the optional arguments. And that's all we need for our method to work. If we call the addition game, the message gets printed. So now let's repeat this process for each game, creating a method and printing the message inside the method. But just as a side note, another feature that Visual Studio has is the ability to collapse and expand pieces of code. So you can do that by clicking on the plus sign and the minus sign on the left where the arrow is. And that's very helpful when your code starts growing and you want to visualize the big picture. You can expand and collapse areas as you wish. And yet another trick that Visual Studio offers is the ability to generate code for you. So here I created the method called multiplication game. And on the left, I have this yellow and red sign. And if I click on it, I have the option to generate the method multiplication game. If I click on that option, the method gets generated for me with an exception, which we're going to learn about later. And that's an exception of the type not implemented exception. But let's carry on and print the message in the multiplication game method. And then to finalize, let's create a division game using the same technique. We're generating the code automatically and printing the division game message. So now we have all our methods and if we run the app, we can test the division game method works. And the same for the multiplication game method. But let's learn a little bit about passing arguments to the methods. And for that, we need to do a bit of refactoring. Refactoring means restructuring the code without changing its behavior. So essentially here, we want to achieve the same result but using different techniques. So let's do some refactoring. So now when we call the addition game method, we're going to pass the message that we want printed, addition game selected. And the compiler immediately complains since that method isn't expecting anything. 
there is no argument in the method's signature. So for this to work, we need to modify the addition game signature by adding the string message. So now that method expects to receive a string and we're going to print that string inside the console.writeLine method. So if we run the app again, the addition game option works, but this time we are calling it through an argument. So let's do the same for the other three methods. I'm going to speed the video up a bit to do the refactoring. And that's it. All the methods have been modified. And if we try it again, multiplication works. And division also works. So that's your introduction to methods, something that you're going to use all the time in C-Sharp.